There you go. Hit that one more time. I am, I am the, the number one determinant, number one determinant of, the of the success or failure. Or failure. Here we go. Of my, of my student. Hey, y'all, you have a strong summer. Kick some butt next year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's the mindset. That's the attitude. Love you guys. And we are live. Welcome, welcome, good morning, good morning, greetings, greetings to week 125 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. Let me see who we got here. We got here my man, Demetrius Scott in the building. He'll be a guest coming up soon. We got Takesha High. Vanessa Deskin, Yolanda McKinney is in the building. Superintendent Peter Finch is in the building. Scott Wiley out there in West Virginia in the building bringing flames. We got Principal Josh Tovar, MPA Jaguars, in the building. Principal Dot McKeever Jeter in the building. MPA, uh, I got that. John Herrick, Rodney Richardson, Delia Gadsen is in the building. Michael Benson, first year principal. Cincinnati, Ohio will be our guest next week with another first year principal. We'll talk about that later. Carlos Baggage, he going to be on here at some point too. Um, he doesn't know that yet, but he'll be on here too, right? Uh, we got who we got? Professor Sherrod Lamont Laws in the building. We got uh, Tori Monique McGowan uh, Castaneda in the building. Lysandra Brackens. Marsha Poe out there in San Diego in the building. Hey, y'all, hit that retweet button. Hit that that um, share button as you come in. LinkedIn, you know, we're on now. So if you're on there, hit that retweet. Hit that share button. Let them know we are here. We got my man Rashad Davis in the building out there in Vegas. We got the queen, my wife, Kimberly Broughton Cafele in the building. We got uh, Josie Santoro, Create and Educate, featuring Dr. Sheikah Houston and soon-to-be Dr. Tammy Taylor in the building. They always drop in science right before we get started. We got Radhika uh, Dinesh, uh, Dinesh in the building. We got my man Gary P. Catano in the building, man. This a dude, man. We go back to high school days out in Woodbridge. High school, Woodbridge Senior High School in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Hey, Gary, I was um, I thought about you when I saw you on the thread the other day. We got to get that lunch going, man. We got to get that lunch. Maybe um, maybe we could swing it in October or something. But we got to get together, man. I got to just shake your hand, man. Embrace you, right? We got my man Michael Moore. We got well, hang on before I get the mic. We got Keyunda. Key, get, Keyunda Jackson Wilson, Michael Moore in the building. Good to see you, sir. You know, I watch all your posts, man. I keep up with you from a distance. We'll connect at some point somehow when I'm down there in NC. We got John Few in the building. We got what we got, what we got. Dr. Isaac Carrier in the building. We got Yolanda Nesbitt in the building, man. I got to shout out your principal Nesbitt. I, I missed it last week. I was like, man, how did I forget? How'd I mess that up? Principal Yolanda Nesbitt is a principal out in uh, Dearborn, Michigan. I had the privilege of being in her school amongst her staff about a month ago now, and she's doing big things. Um, it's, it's, it's students are there by state order, so it's a little bit, little bit different from what a lot of you all are doing. But they got the right leader. That's that's all I could say. They got the right leader. I met I met Principal Nesbitt and they got the right leader out there. So kudos to you. Keep on soaring, Principal Nesbitt, doing your thing, because I know you're doing it at a high level. Students are blessed to have you along with your staff. We got we got we got Melissa Jones Chuno in the building. Grace Castaneda's in the building. 
Facebook user is in the building. <laughs> Shanita Ross is in the building. Who else we got? Jennifer Bortvit Mapes, I think. I, every time I say your name, I think I'm messing it up, man. I, I hope I'm not, though. Raquel Squall is in the building. Who else we got? Lee Henderson, Alan Cowart, Stephanie Goodson, Terry Williams, Tony McClenny, Tiffany Curry, Kate Sue Hayes is in the building. Lily Lanier, Crystal Nolan, Brandon. I'm getting ready to get started, y'all. We got a we got a great one coming today. Uh, Lisa Jordet, I may have messed that first part up, but you said 125, and I appreciate that. Deanna Winston. Bridell is in the building. Angela Wright, Jasmine Harris, Akbar Cook is in the building. OSG off school grounds. We got his teammate, man, from college days is my guest today. So you know that Principal Akbar Cook was going to be in the building repping OSG. We got us. Uh, oh man, my we got. I'm glad I didn't stop because we got my man, Principal Scott Savage, in the building. I'm gonna be at his school Monday, man, out there in Champaign, Illinois, suburb suburb of Chicago. That's Principal Scott Savage, who's leading his alma mater. Imagine that, man, when you can go back and lead your alma mater. That's big, right? So, uh, I see you in a few hours, Scott Savage. Be on that flight tomorrow on my way. Stacy Joseph. All right, y'all. Corey Orlando Collington is my, I had to say his name because that's my guy. He going to be on here too, man. We just got to schedule it. But look here, y'all. It's that time. Hit, Do me a favor. Hit the share button. Hit the retweet button. Let them know. A lot of people, they tune in later because they say he going to be going through his intro. So I'll tune in about 1110. Hit the share button, hit the retweet, because I got something in that motivational message you might want to hear this morning. So let me say to you formally, good morning, greetings, welcome to week 125. That's a milestone. This was supposed to be only 18 weeks. That's a milestone, 125. The next milestone is 150. So welcome to week 125 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And I don't know about you. I say that every week, man. I probably keep saying it. Maybe I need to switch it, but I, I don't know, man. I mean, I think I know because you hear the ones on the thread and the ones, it's a lot of folks that don't come up on the thread. They just, they just watch. They're like, I don't need to put my name up there. I'm just watching. So I see you, right? I see you. So, so, so. I just got you, you know, I always got to let you know how I feel. You know, that's important. I think you could kind of gauge how I feel, but I just want to be definitive and let you know that I'm on fire. That's how I feel, y'all. I'm rocking Mets, man. Y'all like, what are you doing wearing a Mets? That's not Negro Leagues. I know, man, but the New York Mets need a push, man. If you keep up with baseball, if you keep up with Major League, this has been the hottest team in the in the majors all season long. And now it's the final stretch, and they're finding ways to lose to the worst teams in the league at home. They need a push, man. So I said, I don't even listen, y'all. This is gonna sound crazy to somebody. I didn't even own a Mets jersey. I bought this just to wear this to give them some energy. Let me see if I can give y'all the back. Look, look here. Look what it say. Can y'all see that? It say Kafele. <laughs> Number one. I hope you can see <laughs> my wife right up there, like, you bugging. Right? It's it so so you know, so I'm just trying to give them a little something extra so that they could win the division as opposed to relinquish it to the Atlanta Braves. So Mets energy today. I'm getting ready to order the blue one. <laughs> so, so I just need y'all to know once again that I'm on fire. Woo! Woo! That's how I feel, man. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I feel that way every day. When I was laying up quarantine for 14 days with COVID, remember them days like when no one knew what to do, so they just said, stay in your room for 14 days. <laughs> Some random, right? Like, oh, let's see, new pandemic. 
Um, just stay isolated for 14 days, right? When I took it, they 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 could they couldn't when I had it, they couldn't even test me, right? They didn't have enough tests back in them days. So they were like, they said, um, I said, look, I'm, I'm clearly I got it. They, the doctor said, yeah, you do have it, but no diagnosis, right? You stay in your room for 14 days. Okay, doc. And that's what I did, right? Now, you know, things have changed. But but I'm saying that to say this, y'all. I, matter of fact, let me let me just let me let me cut to the chase. I, I want to give you this quick message. I used this word about two weeks ago. I feel a need to go back to it. Commitment, but I want to add this word, adjustment. So my quick message, my quick commentary, my quick motivational is commitment and com and, and adjustment. Commitment and adjustment. Write this down. Commitment and adjustment. And here's what I'm saying. 125 weeks. I, I just want to focus on that for a second. I haven't missed a week, y'all. I haven't missed a week. 125 weeks. A lot of these were done in hotels or, or convention centers, whatever it was when I was traveling. But I didn't say I'm not going to do it. I did it. One week I couldn't record. So I, I, I mean, I couldn't do it live so we could record it. But I said, I'm going to be on here. That's called commitment. But by the same token, I had to make certain adjustments because what I know about speaking virtually, what did anybody know about it? What do I what did what did I know about about StreamYard, Zoom, Teams, Google Meet, Microsoft Word, and how to bring the presentation skill to a little platform on a little laptop. What do I know about that? I had to make certain adjustments. So what does that got to do with you? Everything. I'm talking to somebody out there. In fact, let me get into my camera a little closer. Let me point at you. You got to be committed to what you get yourself into. In this case, we're talking leadership. You got to commit yourself even when the unexpected happens. Who expected a pandemic? So even when the unexpected emerges, you've got to stay committed. You've got to stay focused. You've got to stay serious. You've got to stay diligent. You've got to stay resilient. You've got to stay disciplined, man. You got to stay committed despite Something come out of left field or someone throw a curveball at you. But but by the same token, you got to make adjustments. So life may not be able to be the way you wanted it to be. Or life may not be the way you the way you became accustomed to it being the status quo, if you will. You have to make certain adjustments in your life, certain adjustments in your leadership, because if you try to be old, you in new times. You may have a collision course with yourself. So you got to make sure that you stay committed, but you make the adjustments along the way. That's my commentary for this morning. Hit that retweet button. Hit that share button. Let them know. Man, let, let me tell you something. I, I want to talk to you about a family member real quick. Now, when I say family, I mean our virtual AP Leadership Academy family. You've heard me mention the name Byrian Collins on this broadcast many times she was the she's a new orleans ap who had to endure i think two hurricanes uh a couple of years ago um well she was supposed to be on with me next saturday but her mom passed her mom passed and the funeral is right now as we speak so 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 we're gonna postpone her visit because i wanted to get a very young perspective along with a first year principal who will be on and i brought a different guest but but the point is not the other guest. The point right now is by Rianne. So just condolences to her and her family, as I told her this morning. And uh, you send her the same because she's certainly a long time. She's been with she's been rocking with this platform Saturday morning, Sat virtual AP Leadership Academy. She's been with us since day one. Right. Since day one, when she was still a teacher preparing to become an assistant principal. Right. She's been rocking ever since when the AP 50 came out, the assistant principal 50. She 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 took a selfie and put it right on her social media platforms. So condolences to um to um Byrie Ann Collins, who also called herself Byrie um, for the passing of her mom. 
and she's at the funeral right now. Right. Uh, let's go. Welcome to all the first timers to this platform. Uh, I hope this is not your last. Uh, it's a lot of people, man. The principal was telling me yesterday. I won't mention the principal's name, but he was saying to me yesterday, he said, Principal Kefele, I know what's out here in terms of uh, leadership development. I know what's out here. He said, this is unmatched. Ain't nothing that ranks with this. You know, I, you know, I, I all I can say is thank you. I'm not going to contribute to it, but I, I say thank you when someone feels that highly about this platform, right? Because I know it's benefiting a lot of people, right? So I appreciate that. So the first time is welcome. You missed 124 weeks, <laughs> but here's the beauty. You can see them all because all you have to do is go to YouTube at Virtual AP Leadership Academy and all 125, including today's, are sitting there waiting for you, right? There's a, there's a, there was a school district in Ossining, New York, who used the, the session I did a couple of weeks ago, majoring in the minors. Uh, they used it for a whole leadership training, right? They posted it on Twitter, used it for a whole leadership training, man. That, that blesses my soul, man, that I sat, sit here and talk about whatever the topic is. In this case, majoring in the minors and you can't produce amazing results. And they take that and use it as a training for an entire district st leadership staff. Man, that's 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 the blessing pouring down, right? So, um, you know, so so the information is out there. You just got to use it. Just got to use it. Um, congrats to the folks. You know, I'm still getting calls from people who got the job, man. I'm I'm still getting it. So, I, congrats to you. And as I always, say now the heavy lifting. Now, right? Let's keep going. Um, real quick. These two, that's all I'm pushing right now. The assistant principal 50, the aspiring principal 50, which I could also call the aspiring assistant principal 50. Either way, get them now. Just go to um, Amazon.com and you can get them. Some of you may have noticed, um, if you if you follow me on Facebook, some of you may have seen that I just finished writing the, the, the manuscript for the new assistant principal book. I submitted it to my publisher, ASCD, uh, yesterday, I think it was. It was, it's called, here's the title I gave it, Protecting Your Assistant Principal Leadership Effectiveness, with the emphasis being on this word protecting. That's going to be capitalized, right? Protecting your assistant principal leadership effectiveness. I, I had to step outside the box on this one, and I said, what, what is it that no one's writing about, right? Like, we all talk about professional growth, professional learning right professional development we all talk about that that's what we do that's what this is but who's talking about protecting i mean hey jasmine since you said it <laughs> jasmine harris well let me throw it up there right <laughs> don't forget the newest one y'all right so but but here's the thing who's talking about protecting what you got you know how we protect we protect our, our, our belongings, our property. We protect our loved ones, right? We protect our space, you know, all things we protect. Well, I said, but what about protecting our gains, our attributes, our characteristics, our traits, our leadership, et cetera, as it relates to AP leadership? That's what that book is about. Comes, comes out approximately April or May of 2023. And then I'll go on and write volume two and volume three. So stay posted. Uh, stay tuned, I should say. And then lastly, um, and then I'm ready to go. As I said, I'm, I'm just trying to help the Mets out, man. I'm from Jersey. I grew up a Mets fan. I'm trying to help them out because they, 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 they falling apart, man. So I said, let me, let me buy me a shirt, man. I don't wear this stuff, man. I wear Negro League stuff. I said, let me buy me a shirt and put my name on the back. And let me let me get them some energy. So that's what this is about. You know, y'all, I, I got a guest today, man. It's enough of, enough of me. I got a guest today. I just threw my sheet in the wrong place. Here it is. And my topic is my leadership was birthed in a pandemic, right? My leadership, meaning my, in this case, principal, but some of you as an AP, was birthed in a pandemic, dot, dot, dot. And I grew from it. Imagine that. And I grew from it is our topic. So I said, well, let me, let me get somebody whose leadership was birthed in a pandemic. Right. And I found somebody, one of our family members, he'd been with us from day one principal Otis kitchen. The second welcome 
to the Virtual AP Leadership Academy. How you feeling? I feel great. And it's definitely a blessing to be on here, to be with you. I've learned so much from you. And I'm looking forward to talking about all the things I've learned from you, as well as mentors in my life. Let's do it. Let's do it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to have you here, man. I feel like we actually know each other well because we've been interacting since, you know, for a long time. And I, and I just want the folks to know that, you know, your, your basketball teammate, Principal Akbar Cook, he's on here. And he was, yes, um, he, he was a guest of mine a little while ago. But, you know, you, the two of you were teammates in school and remained friends and got you both on here, man. I'm, I'm blessed by that. I want the folks to know who you are. So let me let me read the bio and um and then we're gonna get rocking. Hey folks, hit the share button, hit the retweet button, let them know we're ready. And uh I got I took before I read the bio, I told I told uh principal uh principal Otis uh kitchen that I said, you know, I, I got 12 questions, but a lot of them got three and four parts. <laughs> <laughs> so I I got I got overzealous, y'all, but it's all man what y'all got to do today stay here with me hit the share button hit the retweet button let them know it's that time of the week otis kitchen the second has been an elementary school educator for 17 years he's been a teacher in palm beach county and a teacher and administrator in hillsborough county school systems before becoming the principal of town and country elementary school in 2020 he was selected as a candidate for the Hillsborough County School System to receive two years of extensive teaching and coaching and educational leadership. He, was, he has served as a presenter on various school topics for the Hillsborough County Assistant Principal Council and community groups. He has also served as a member of several Hillsborough County School System committees on school leadership and equity. He is currently he currently co-facilitates the cultural proficient leadership course for the district and, and was the 2021-22 Hillsborough County Elementary Music Council Principal of the Year. We're going to talk about that, too. One of his greatest passions is sharing the best practice strategies that he has researched and successfully used to solidify his philosophy that all students can excel. One of his strengths is promoting positive relationships among all stakeholders he's a proud he's proud to be a founding member of the black male leadership initiative that has a mission to equip and empower black male educators to develop it, to elevate their knowledge base and skills to prepare them for diverse roles across all levels of school and district leadership principal kitchen received a bachelor's degree in elementary education in 2001 and a master's degree in educational technology and research in 2003 from Florida Atlantic University. And every time I see this, this town, I always say, I need to ask someone how to pronounce it. I, 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 think, I guess it's Boca Raton. Is that, is, is... Boca Raton. Boca Raton. I, I never <laughs> ask anybody. Boca Raton, Florida. In 2012, he received a master's degree in educational leadership from St. Leo College in San Antonio, Florida, which I never knew there was a San Antonio in Florida. So that is the um, that is the, the, the story, the, the short story, the bio for Principal Otis Kitchen. Um, I'm, I'm ready to get started, y'all. And, you know, I got these three questions that I always ask all my guests. I kind of tweaked the third one a little bit for the first time. But but let's 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 let's, let's rock it out. Principal Kitchen, as an educator, who is Otis Kitchen? Well, as an educator, I'm someone who's passionate about empowering everyone to believe that every student can excel. And by that, I mean mentally, because everything starts here. And if you can get the collective group to really believe that every student can excel and by us all working together and we're stronger together to be able to achieve that, anything is possible. And I'll never forget when you first did the Carter G. Woodson quote where he quoted back in 1933 yeah. to, to to control a man's thoughts you do not have to worry about his actions because he you don't have to tell him to stand here or go yonder he will find his proper place and he will stay in it that that resonated with me so much to the point where I reflect on that quote daily because there's so many things that can alter you and really make you feel inferior if you're not 
really cognizant of that. So I want to inspire and empower everyone to believe in students and especially for the students to believe in themselves that they can and will excel. But the first step is for them to believe in themselves. I love it. They, they, they can. They will excel. But the first step, as you said, they've got to believe in themselves. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And, 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 and as I asked you the question, who is Otis Kitchen? What you're telling me is that's who you are. Yes. That's who you are. You know, as, as an educator, all, all about young people. You know, I'll, I'll ask you then, what made you, because uh, because you obviously, you know, everybody I bring on here, you, you know, we're talking about very brilliant people, very smart, very intelligent people that could have done a million different things with their lives. Why choose education? And with all the years you've been in it, what continues to fuel your passion for this work? I, I chose education because I understand the power of influencing others here because I've always been taller than everyone. So immediately people put me in the basketball player box and only put me there. I, in people's minds, a lot of people's minds, not all people's minds, but they only wanted me to focus on just being the best basketball player that I can be. Yeah. But I came across my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Mebin, and he really, truly inspired and made me believe that, guess what? There are other things that you can be great in. You can be great in both. You can be great in basketball and you can be brilliant in book study or whatever you choose to be. But don't let people put you in a box and stereotype you to the point where you just feel like you have to be this specific person. So with that, I know I went into education to influence others, just like Mr. Mebbin influenced me to understand that there is brilliance beyond what you can think of. And I want to bring that out and I want to continue to bring that out as much as I possibly can. I love it. And, and you know, you being tall, and, and I asked you your exact height, and you told me 6'5". And so with you being tall, it, it's, it's, so, it's so normal for people to see a tall youngster and, and ask the question, male or female, do you play basketball? And, and I had to catch myself over the years, and, and I did. And, and I said, I'm not going to ask these tall kids if they play. If, 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 if I get into a rapport with them, then I'll I'll ask that question at some point within the conversation. But I'm not going to meet a, a tall youngster anymore. I vowed this a long time ago. I'm not going to meet a tall youngster and go right to basketball. Let me let me go to his 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 intellectualism first, right? And and then and then we'll we'll go there. And then at some point, because he's tall, I'll ask. But the thing is, my wife's side of the family, they're all it's all tall people. You know, we, you know, we got, we got one, one, one of her cousins is like six, eight, six, nine, right. Darren, Darren Henry. Um, and he, 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 he has an ability, but he's not a ball player. Right. Then there's others in the family. They have the ability to play, but they're not necessarily ball players. Right. They just, they just have an ability to play, but everyone asked the question, do you play basketball? Right. So I guess I went on a tangent with that to say to the folks who are watching, make sure you don't fall into that trap. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you don't fall into that trap because there's there's more to that youngster. But if you keep asking, do you play basketball? Do you play basketball? Or if he's big, do you play football? Right. Then then, then what are we saying to that youngster? We, we, we're leaving this out. Right. So that's that's so important. I'm glad you said that because that was not on my radar. Yeah. Right. Well, you're, you're, you're planting seeds for that youngster to only think that he or she can only be that. Yeah, that's, that's the, and, and that's why that Carter G. Woodson quote is extremely important to me, because as we navigate and weave through what W.E.B. the boy called double consciousness, that's right. we're, we're going between these two worlds. We, we have to understand our brilliance here and understand who we are historically as black people and the barriers we've been able to overcome. And this, this right here is extremely important. So when you're planting those seeds of your ball player and that's what you are, 
empowering our students to understand, guess what? You can be both if you choose to. You can be brilliant over here and over here. You can excel over here and over here. That's right. I, I love it. I love it. You know, uh, Principal Kitchen, uh, you went on and became a principal. And, and, and my question is, what made you want to become a principal? And, 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 and what did you want to accomplish once you got in that position that you felt that you could not necessarily accomplish as a classroom teacher? I wanted students to see me and I wanted them to see me on the elementary school level. I wanted three-year-olds to be able to see me as someone who's a proud six foot five black man who stereotypically isn't supposed to be in this role, to be in this role and to, for them to understand that you can be in this role or you can be whatever you choose to also. And I feel like I can make a bigger positive influence in this leadership role to be able to, again, touch their minds to believe that you can and you will excel if you believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be a principal for a multiplicity of reasons. Um, as I say on here all the time, one of the major reason was just being be, being that presence for my, my young men. But there were so many other things that I knew I couldn't do at the classroom level, but I could do it at the leadership level. So I was I was hungry to get to that position where I could just bring all that to fruition. So great stuff. You know, you I, I, I put in the post this morning when I advertised that we were going to be on. I called you a pandemic principal. And and I, I hope people understand what I mean by that. You know, there's particularly in the context of today's title. Um, that I was that I was my leadership was birthed in a pandemic and yours was birthed in a pandemic, not your AP days. But we know the AP and the principal are not the same world, so to speak. But here you are, a new principal in the 2021 school year during a shutdown in the state of Florida, which 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 has relevance. And um, and, 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 and my question to you with that and, and, and let me say to the audience first before I ask the question. I've made a decision that I want to bring on some other folks, not just these folks who are got all these books that they've written and have been leading for 20, 30 years and all that kind of stuff. I want to start bringing on some folks who don't have a lot of experience. Right. And, and, and hence a Otis Kitchen, who's in his third year of his principalship. Next week, I'm bringing on two first year principals. One of them's only been leading because he's in Jersey, only been leading for two weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. The other one is in Cincinnati. He's only been leading for one month. I want to bring on some folks because they're new folks that watch. And, and, and I want I want to bring on your peers that a lot of you can identify with, not just the one that's got all the books and all the speaking engagements and all the consulting and all, and all the reputation and all that kind of stuff. The name recognition. I want to bring some of your peers on here. Right. That you say, oh, I can relate to that. So with that question, Principal Kitchen, um, you come in in 2020, What was it like to be a first year principal in the midst of a pandemic? And what was it like for your AP? You have an AP? Yes, sir. So what was it like for your AP or APs? You could you could clarify that for me and yourself. Brand new. And it's a pandemic. I honestly looked at it with a with a blessing mindset because I realized that, guess what? We're all new to this. I don't care if you have 15, 20 years as being a principal, what we were coming into, this is new to all of us. So we're all learning together. So we're all at square one. And with that mindset, my assistant principal, Nicole Zamora and I, we just worked together and just ensured that number one, we set the tone of the school. And by that, I mean, every day at 615, 630, we welcome everyone into the building each and every day. And we started that back in 2020, 21. And we continue to do that today as everybody get out of their cars. We're happy Monday, happy Tuesday, happy Wednesday. And by that, you're connecting with people and you're setting the tone because what we realized is that connection with people more than ever and valuing them 
is extremely important. And the only way you can do that is to be visible and to be there with them throughout the entire day. And and I learned this from you, Principal Crefele, having those conversations all the time, but not necessarily about what's going on academically, but how's it going in, in, in your life personally? How, how, how are the games going on the weekend? And you're just having these conversations and, you, and you're having a feel of what's going on in the building and the students are seeing you as well. And with that, they know that you're connected and you value them because they visibly see you all day, every day. Did you, um, did within that, did you have any stay at home time or you guys were always in the building? We pretty much were always in the building, which I thought was a blessing because I got an opportunity to really, like I said, connect with the faculty, but we did have educators that were out the building. So we had to be very strategic in how we connected with them. We had to make sure we logged on every single day. So you were hybrid. My assistant principal and I, we were making home visits and we were literally FaceTiming with families so teachers could know that we're connecting with students and families in real time so we can still try to stay connected with everybody. So we had to make some tweaks, but in the end, we were able to use technology to stay connected. Wow. All right. Well, that, that's that's powerful. And, and you kind of you pretty much answered my next question, which was a part B to this this question of um, this this statement of you being a, a pandemic principal. But I'll throw it at you anyway. How did you stay connected to your staff, your APs, your students and your entire school? Well, like I told you before, yeah. that, vis that visibility piece in the building all day, every day, and that still carries on today was extremely important, as well as using FaceTime and WhatsApp to connect and FaceTime with people as you go in and out of people's homes if they welcomed me, as well as using Google Translate. Google Translate is extremely powerful in terms of connecting with English and Spanish families and being able to hit the conversation button to where we can communicate constantly with each other. That's extremely important. So just using tech and being visible were, were, were powerful ways for me to continue to try to stay connected. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet. My buddy uh, Donna Shara Gantz not with us today. She usually hits all them Facebook groups. But so uh, those of you connected to some of them principal groups on Facebook, hit them up. Share them for me. And I appreciate that. Tag them or whatever whatever your methodology is. So 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 with all that, uh, Principal Kitchen, what what lessons were learned during that challenging time of the pandemic? And, and what what type of application do those lessons have to your current leadership as we're not out of a pandemic, but we're not what we were in 2021? Any Anything that, that, that you learned during that time that has application to today? Valuing people, words and actions being aligned and you valuing people and by that, I mean, I don't care who steps on that campus. They must feel like they are the most important person in the world. And I'm including substitute educators as well, because if you're not connecting with everyone, including substitutes, to the point where they feel valued and you invite them to whatever function you have at your school, whether it's you all are engaging and eating together on campus, or if you all go off campus, the, the, these people need to feel like they are a part of what you're doing. And once people feel valued and they can see and talk to you each and every day, mm -hmm. because there's a huge teacher shortage out there and people want to they need to have to want to come to be at your school. And that starts with you as the leader. You have to show value to people each and every day. And you have to be consistent with that and very strategic. And I mean strategic. You got to take care of yourself because in order to be visible and do what you need to do, you need to make sure that you're getting the proper sleep. You need to make sure that you're eating properly 
you need to make sure that you're setting goals for yourself. I personally set Fitbit goals of seven hours per sleep per day, 10,000 mm -hmm. steps. And I know if I'm not hitting those targets, I'm not putting myself in position to be visible, to value people. Hmm. Wow. I love it. I love it. And especially, you know, that word you've been hitting value, how we value others. Right. That I mean, that, that just matters exponentially. Right. So. So, you know, here we here we were and I'm, I'm focusing on your early year, your early years, although you still the third year. So I'm focusing on that first year because there's so much there's so much there and then I'm a transition out of it. But for now, um, considering that you were in this this new role and and you new role as a principal in isolation from the pandemic just here you in a new role you're in a new lane but you got these pandemic challenges how were you able to keep a focus on your bottom line and when i say your bottom line i'm talking about student success in the classroom student achievement i'm not talking about test scores i'm just talking about overall achievement how were you able to keep a focus there with all the other stuff that you had to contend with? Well, I know just coming on with you week to week was a constant reminder of the importance of seeking new knowledge every single opportunity that I can, because within the pandemic, there are so many things going on that you could lose focus on the importance of continuous learning. Yeah. So just being consistent with that and bringing little nuggets that I learned from you here and there to my leadership allowed me to stay focused and do what I need to do to inspire others to be successful. And one little nugget I picked up from you also is the importance of the morning message. Mm. That 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 sets the tone for the entire day and speaking directly to students and inspiring them with repetition to the point where that repetition gets ingrained in their mind. So when I'm out and about in the school, kids are repeating to me, I can and will excel, Mr. Kitchen. I can and will excel, Mr. Kitchen. So if the students are repeating that constantly and the teachers are hearing the students repeating that constantly and I'm visible and we're having these conversations about it each and every day, all day, every day, it becomes a norm to where now we are all believing it here that every student can excel and we don't lose focus of that because that morning message is really setting the tone for that to happen each and every day. That morning message, man, um, as anybody that knows, including yourself, knows anything about my work, that morning message matters. It's everything. It's everything. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. And I still go to schools where folks try to justify not doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're, you're the head coach. How, how? It's game day. Every day is game day. How, how do you send your kids out onto the field? And they didn't hear your final thoughts, your final instructions, your final encouragement, inspiration, empowerment, whatever it is. You just sent them out there to play, to compete. No, that, that, I, I, I so much appreciate you saying that because it's so important. And I guess I'm I, I guess I'm, I'm preaching to the audience out here to say those of you who are not in principal leadership, you're AP and you don't have the access to that mic just yet. But have it in your mind that when I get that, when I get that principalship, I'm going to grab that mic. I'll pretend this pen is a mic. I'm going to grab that mic every morning and I'm going to make sure that I give them that message. I'm going to give them my word. I'm going to pour into them. I'm going to give them myself, my all to lay and, that foundation and set that tone. And, 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 and the energy must be there because yeah. you and when you come on the show, you bring that energy and that yeah. energy creates that synergy. So. When you have the microphone, you, 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 like you talk about, you have to bring it. You you must bring it because everything starts with us as leaders, as the principal of the building. It begins and ends with you. That's right. And you said in your answer to the the previous question, there was a, there was two words you said that jumped out at me that I wanted to I wanted to depress you even further. 
you said ensuring continual learning. And that resonated me with me the way you said it. Con you didn't say ensuring learning. You said continual learning, right? Talk to us because we got a lot of folks still in AP positions. We got a lot of new administrators or school leaders on here. Talk to us about the significance of the difference between learning and continual learning. Now, now Principal Cafe, I know you love Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Rest in peace to Kobe. So that's right. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the Mamba mentality for a second. Yeah. And I'll never forget. I saw a video of Kobe Bryant, and he described when he got to the NBA what separated him from everyone else. And he said that he noticed that guys would wake up maybe about 10 a.m., 11 a.m., maybe going at one o'clock to work out. And then they would go home to take a shower, get something to eat. And then they would go back to the gym, maybe around 6 or 7 p.m. Yeah. And just be finished at 9 p.m. So they've done two workouts. He said he would start his day at 4 a.m. Right. He's in the gym by 6 a.m., come back home, go back at 11 a.m., finish at 1, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., 7 p.m. So he's done four workouts versus these guys having only two Right. And he said over the course of time, just that alone, he was able to separate himself from a lot of people in the league, which lets me know that continuous learning without anyone asking you to do something or it being a mandatory training, but you're just trying to get better each and every day and being very strategic like Kobe was about it with that mama mentality, yeah. you're able to separate yourself from everyone else because everyone else is doing things, unfortunately, because they're being made to do it versus wanting to get better each and every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I like to think that I have that mama mentality. Oh, you do, sir. You do. It's, it's, it's like once I'm once I'm ready to go, I'm locked in. You know, that that book I just finished. I wrote that in less than a month. We're talking about thirty one thousand words from a full time presenter. Mm -hmm. Right. So if, if I'm on the plane, I'm writing. If yeah. I'm sitting at the gate, I'm writing. If I'm in the hotel room, I'm writing. When I'm home, I'm writing. I got that Mamba mentality, man. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not waiting for like the contract said. I, had, I told him I had a book to you by November 30th. Man, I turned that book in yesterday on September 16, man. Cause, cause, because 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 I'm going full throttle mm -hmm. and I'm not letting anything get in, get in the way of my own individual success. Right. I'm, I'm going after it and, I'm, and I'm, I'm going hard and I'm coming, man, I'm coming. And it, as old as I as old as much as I'm, I'm getting old, I'll be 62 in less than a month. But I'm coming. And that's and that's the mentality. I'm talking to somebody out there watching that right now. Yeah. Are you bringing that mentality and inclusive of that continual, continual learning? I'm coming, man. I'm coming, man. I'm going hard. I ain't saying don't. don't I'm not saying disrupt your work life balance. But yeah. I'm saying while you in that work mode, do you bring that mentality? Man? See, that's. That's critical. Let's let's keep going. You know, you mentioned the virtual AP Leadership Academy, man. I got I got to ask you a question about that. You 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 taught you touched on it, but hey, we on here, we all on this same platform this morning. How did this academy benefit you? Oh man, where 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 do I begin? I know I mentioned the morning message. Yeah. I know I mentioned the importance of visibility, but let let me talk about student achievement data for a second because. I'll never forget when you said that you wanted to know all aspects of your school to the point where something was going on on your roof. So you climbed on the roof yeah. because you wanted to know what was going on. You wanted to know the roof of the building, sir. So I said to myself, I need to be able to understand all aspects of our school to the point where I quote, know the roof of the building. So just those little nuggets, each and every time I come on here, I just make sure I write them down. Also, I learned about how you talked about Sunday. You, you were very strategic and you 
planning out your day, planning out your entire week, right. what you were going to say, which classrooms you were going to hit. You were very strategic in how you set your day out and you sent your message out to the faculty and staff. I said, you know what? I need to step my organizational game up to the point where I'm organized in not only how I communicate, but also how I'm structuring out my week, what's on my calendar, making sure that I'm visible at all times. All that has to be organized and you have to be strategic in that, as well as time when you have away from the job and planning vacations to recharge and come back stronger. My wife and I, we do, I feel like we do an, an, ex, an excellent job of planning those things out as well, but planning and organization is extremely important. And these are key aspects that were reinforced on the virtual AP Leadership Academy. Yeah. I, hey, I appreciate it. I just wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. We, we try. We, oh. try, we, we trying and going to keep on trying. You know it. Hey, Principal Kitchen, you, you, um, how many years were you assistant principal? Six years. Six years. And my question, I got a three, I got a four parter. In okay. what ways did your assistant principalship prepare you for the challenges of the principalship? Well, I'm glad you asked that. I feel the number one thing that I had to make sure that I did as an assistant principal is I had to learn how I was being evaluated, the leadership rubric, because there are certain competencies on that rubric that you need to know if you're going to be effective, number one, and number two, what, what are the components of this job? So I'll never forget my, my first year as an assistant principal, my evaluation didn't, it didn't turn out so well. So I had to, I had to figure out exactly where I went wrong and how, how was my evaluation not better than what I thought it was. But then I had to realize, you know what? I didn't even know how I was being evaluated. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't even look at the rubric and discipline. We have so many components of the rubric. Discipline is only a little small square of a section of the rubric. All the other components of the rubric is strategic planning and change management, achievement focus and goal orientation, how you manage and developing people, how you creating community partnerships and building win-win opportunities, all these different things, but mm -hmm. I didn't even know how I was evaluated. So once I was able to learn that rubric and ask my principal, and it was a blessing that she allowed me, Elizabeth Giles, she allowed me to work on different aspects of that rubric and some of the actions behind that. Then I was able to grow and continue to learn and prepare myself for the principalship. I love it. And, and you know, I, I asked that question because, I'm, you know, as, I, as you hear me say all the time, I'm always conscious of who's in the audience. And when I ask you the question, in what ways does does, does your prince did your principalship benefit or prepare you for principal leadership? I want I want the assistant principals on the platform right now to hold up your mirror and to ask yourself, how is my AP experience preparing me for that next step? And if it is not then you got to ask yourself some tough questions. Like, how am I positioning myself? Am I talking to the leader to say that I need more? Am I seeking information and, 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 and just knowledge from elsewhere if I'm not getting it within? But if you keep your eyes open wide enough and your ears open wide enough, you're going to learn regardless. So instead of being upset and sulking about whatever your experience may be, there's still learning opportunities because that whole day is learning in terms of who you won't be as principal of your AP one day. You're learning that that experience you had, I can't replicate it when I have an AP and I relegate my AP to whoever that was I was. So that's why I throw that at you. And I, I, I love what you what you just gave us. So, so with that part B, what would you say to an assistant principal viewer out there that is not getting the experience and exposure that you got as an AP? Again, I would, number one, ask that assistant principal to 
understand the rubric. Whatever you're being evaluated on, maybe you need to connect with someone to help you to understand it. But once you're able to understand it, be very visible in your actions and how you connect your actions to the rubric. And you need to get multiple different people understanding how you're connecting your actions to the rubric. So, for example, when you send emails out, send emails out to multiple different stakeholders, leadership team people, teachers, but use rubric language. Use rubric language in what you're sending to people. And it's it's going to start resonating. Wait, like, wait a minute. He, he or she is making win-win opportunities for the school because I remember reading the email and, and, and specifically put it in there. Oh, he, he or she is finding root causes of things happening and empowering subsets of students to be successful. Because I remember reading an email where he or she was talking about leading a PLC and talking about data and talking about next steps related to that. So, oh, I remember how he was focused on setting goals and helping students because I remember in front of the faculty, he was speaking about that and he was following up, he or she was following up. So you got to understand the, how you're being evaluated and use that language to shine a light shine yeah. a light to the point where the light illuminates yeah. your knowledge and how you're able to be successful in those capacities. I like how you said rubric language and apparently a whole lot of, cause I'm, you know, I look at the thread the whole time and I see a lot of people that resonated with them. Um, that rubric language that you refer to, that's, that's, that's important stuff. You know, um, a lot of principal kitchen, a lot of people ask me, they write me, and they ask, when does one know that they're ready to make that transition or at least seek out that transition to the principalship? Like, when do you, when do you know your, it's your time? When do you know that you're prepared? Well, I, before I pose the question to you, um, I, I sorted it out as soon as I got to the, the first day I was an AP. I said, I'm ready to be a principal, right? Now, does, does that mean I had the preparation? No, I didn't. Right. And I didn't gain the preparation as an AP, but we're talking about a mentality once again. And in my mind, I'm ready to lead a school. Right. I'm, I'm first first day AP. I came mid year. So we're talking July. I mean, J January 2nd, 10 days ago, I was teaching fifth graders. Right. And then so 10 days later, I'm the admit I'm the, I'm second in command as an AP. But in my mind, I'm ready to lead a school. So I'm saying that to say this and then I'm going to turn it over to you. Everybody's different, right? In, in terms of my perspective, I want, I'm, I'm anxious to hear yours. Everyone's different. So what worked for Kefele may not work for you. It's, you you, you got to figure that out. But let me go to you. What advice, Principal Kitchen, do you have for our AP viewers out there who may have the same question, when do, you, when do I know I'm ready to start seeking out school leadership as a principal? Well, I learned this little nugget on the Virtual AP Leadership Academy also, <laughs> which is step one, you have to envision yourself in the role. Yeah. You have to really understand and see yourself in the role. That, that's step one. And then step two, I described all these actions about understanding the rubric and seeking out support as it relates to the actions in the rubric. And the last thing I would say, you, you, you got you to gotta have faith. It's not going to be the stars aren't going to align to the point where, oh, the stars are aligned. I need to go ahead and try to step forward. No, you have to understand you've put in the work and you have to put in the work. You put in the work, yeah. you've envisioned yourself, and then you got to put yourself out there. And then a combination of those three things, I feel like you'll – be in position to be successful if you believe it here you gotta believe it here so so i'm gonna so i'm gonna say to folks because, because you will find your proper place and you will stay in it find your proper place and you will stay in it yeah so 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 you you gotta know you that's i mean that's the bottom line you gotta you gotta know you 
and and some some people they're not ready for 10 years some people are not ready for five years some people are just ready you know it, it, it's 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 you and you gotta you. know you yep. you gotta know you you know some people are ready to go to the nba from from high school <laughs> you know bron kobe etc others they need four years of college and they could still be a superstar no doubt right it just it's it's the individual so you gotta you gotta look you gotta find like turn off unplug everything turn off everything find your quiet spot family you i can't be with y'all right now find your quiet spot get your little mirror and have a conversation with you am i ready mm -hmm. am i ready for the responsibility of leading a school Right. Then then the next question typically is, how do I get how, how do I get past the interview where you go to my YouTube channel at Virtual AP Leadership? You took the words out of my mouth. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I refer everybody to those videos. I appreciate it. I no appreciate doubt. it. No doubt. Appreciate it. Let's go. So um, prior to becoming an AP, you received two years of extensive teaching and coaching in ed leadership. Mm -hmm. um, which which I read in the bio. And for the aspiring principal out there who's not in a district that has that leadership development program, right? Because what mm -hmm. a benefit that is. I didn't have that, but I had, a AP, I had an assistant superintendent that's a friend to this day that did take me under his wing, mm -hmm. right? So, so I, but everyone's not going to have that, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so what do you say to that AP that doesn't have someone to take them under the wing, that doesn't have the leadership development program, but not, not only AP, but teacher, counselor, someone who's not in leadership, where do they get that experience? Or where do they get just the knowledge to, to, to make that transition? Because I, I know I've learned a little something, something. Oh man, this is easy. So number one, all of these resources that you put out, sir, I mean, all the books that ask reflective questions, yeah. all the content that you have on these YouTube videos that you can go back, rewind, stop, go back, rewind, stop, take notes. I remember, I forgot her name. She used to take notes for you every single week. Those notes are still available on Twitter. Yeah. You, can, you yeah. can search those notes and read all the answers to those questions because it goes back at least 40 weeks of yeah. content. There's just, there, yeah. Honestly, there's just too much content out here, sir, for you not to be able to put yourself in position to be successful and have the knowledge here. I'm sorry. I appreciate it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's it's a lot out here. Come on, bro. man. Yeah, don't shortchange yourself. No. It's a lot out here. There, there's somebody out here in the world that doesn't know this platform exists, for example, right? Yeah. So there's somewhere, uh, man, I wish I had something, you know, talk, listen, learn from other leaders in various different parts of the country and how they're doing things. And they don't know it's here. So so you got to You got to be one this this in the game. And I say to folks all the time, if you're not on Twitter, you need to get on Twitter because you're going to find stuff on Twitter. Right. But if you're not in it because oh, that's not the sexy thing, I, the, the sexy platform. I like Instagram. I like Facebook. I like TikTok, right? And whatever. Twitter is man 180 characters, but but I mean 280 characters, but that's the one that's got the professional learning. It's a game changer. Gotta be in it. Gotta be in it, man. Right? Good stuff. Hey, hey, Principal Kitchen, and, and this this I found this one intriguing. In 2021-22, which would mean last school year, you were named the Hillsborough, the Hillsborough County Elementary Music Council Principal of the Year. Again, in your second year as a, as a principal, what, what exactly does that mean? What is Music Council Principal of the Year? Oh, that was definitely a blessing. So it just means that we try to promote and empower our students to be creative musically. And we did some things to put the students in position to be successful to do that. Our assistant principal, Nicole Zamora, she was able to bring what she did at her other school, which was we need to try to get the students in the building early. Mm -hmm. If we if we can get the students here at 630 in the morning. Wow. And they and they want to be a part of the music program, then not only will we be able to impact attendance, but 
will be able to ensure that they're at practice on time. So the assistant principal and I, as we were greeting teachers in each and every day, and we still do that to this day around 6.15, 6.30, students come in and we saw attendance over time increase. Mm. And, and, and then throughout all the community partnerships that we've been able to establish, when they've been able to get additional funding to buy musical instruments for them to be able to enhance opportunities for them to be creative in that capacity. Wow. So just doing a combination of those two things and it just became a part of our way of life and it didn't seem like it was anything extra or normal. Um, music educator, Miss Virginia Vera nominated me at our school and I'm sitting at the banquet and they're reading all these things about a school. And in my mind, I'm like, wait a minute. Those are some of the things that we're doing. And then they just announced my name. Oh, wow. So I got a chance to go on stage and recognize our assistant principal, recognize the music educator, recognize all the students, because it was a collective group of all of us to be able to celebrate the opportunity for me to get that. And it was a blessing to all of us. Wow, that's that's big time. And see, you're doing all this big time stuff as, in this case, a second year principal last year. And um, and you were recognized for it. You were rewarded. So as as uh, Dr. Houston just said, congratulations to you on that. And, and, and the sky's the limit for you. And then I, I see that you're you're a founding member of the the Black Male Leadership in Initiative that has that. And I'm going to read this. It has a mission to equip and empower black male educators to elevate their knowledge base and skills to prepare them for diverse roles across all levels of district and school uh, school and district leadership. So my question is, why why did you involve yourself in, in, in this initiative or an initiative like this? And, and what advice would you have? It's two part. What advice would you have for those representing districts that don't have initiatives like this? Well, I definitely found out that as a black male educator, we can feel isolated. We can feel like we're on an island. No one can connect to our unique experiences. I'm, I'm getting frustrated in a lot of different areas. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the one who's just feeling this way. Maybe I'm feeling frustrated. Maybe, maybe I'm just not doing something right to cause me to feel this way. Well, we started to realize that other black males were having these same feelings. So, you know what? Let's start getting together and let's start talking through why we're feeling this way. Let's talk through opportunities to where we can connect and grow together. We call it iron sharpening iron. Let's read some of these books like Principal Kafele's book and have book studies about these books. Let's bring other black males in to where we can ensure that they don't feel like they're on an island and they understand that we are here to support you in whatever capacity you need to be supported in. So it, it, it was an opportunity for us to just feel empowered and feel as if we're all in this together because there's just so much importance in us feeling like we can be connected to someone with the same type of experiences. And through that, we can be empowered and make much more of a significant positive impact as a result of that. Yeah, I, I love that. You know, just the brothers coming together and and just 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 having conversation. I you know I I think about I haven't done it yet, but I I, I think about doing something like that on on here as as a Zoom presentation as not a presentation as as a Zoom chat for bringing these these young men together in a safe space, I would hope, where we could have those conversations virtually, but nationally. I think about it all the time. I probably The, the thought probably crosses my, my mind every day. I just haven't moved on it, but um, it's probably something I need to move on where we can come together and just talk about life being in our shoes and in our skin as, as leaders or even maybe aspiring leaders, you know, to get them prepared for what this really is, you know, but that I applaud you on that. It's, um, being a founding member because it's just a vital conversation. It's a conversation that just has to take place. 
because in, in, in the whole equity space, and we tend to think about that with young people, but it's, it's, it's a conversation of adults as well yeah. in terms of are we, are we treated equitably within our leadership capacities? within uh within our schools and districts so important conversation so you stay tuned you never know i may i may i may move on that it, it wouldn't be a public it, it would be through zoom so people would have to be members you know because i don't want anybody oh man that that'd be phenomenal that'd be yeah. so, yo ooh, ooh. yeah yeah I'm, I'm thinking about it, it it's, it's 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 necessary but moving on you know um you played b-ball you played basketball um i, I mentioned earlier you and uh previous guests Principal Akbar Cook with teammates in in college. So, but but you played basketball at a, at a high level in high school and college. I, I got to do a little bit of that research over the years to see you in high school. And um, what elements of of basketball informed who you became as principal? Well, I'll, I'll take it back to when I used to work the summers and, and work basketball camps. So I would be connecting with players and I noticed that they really gravitated towards me and my personality and really wanted to learn from me as it related to basketball. And then I will also work summers at the park and rec. I'm still connecting with young students and noticing that, again, they're connecting with me. So I, I knew early on that I had a presence with young people and they – I can impact them in a positive way. So with basketball, I knew that I could be a leader by example on the basketball court, but I can also be a leader by example to young students as well. And I knew I had the confidence, not arrogance, but confidence yeah. to be able to, to be able to carry myself and how I view how I should be in order to impact young youth. So therefore, I wanted to make sure I was able to do that. You got your background going on? Yeah, let me... Oh. It's, it's, it's Alexa. Alexa's going on. Oh, no, I, I wonder why sure. Alexa's going on. I wanted to make sure it wasn't on my end. Yeah. 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 All right, I got it. I got three more questions. Hang in there with us, folks. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet. Let them know we having a dynamite conversation here. You know, um, Principal Kitchen is a blogger. I'm talking to the folks now. He's written uh, an article recently in August that he published. And I, and I, and I just want to holler at everybody out there that I'm a firm believer. This is not the first time I've said this. But if you're in leadership, if you're in the classroom as a teacher, you got to write. Right. It's almost non-negotiable. You, you got to write. You got to blog. Right. You don't have to you don't have to find a publisher, some major organization to publish an article you wrote, because in today's world, everybody can publish by way of their own blog page or get on somebody else's blog page. But you got to write because I don't care what your experience is. You have something of value for somebody else. You do. But you got to have the audacity to put the pen to the paper and to publish it meaning put it online so that others can benefit. That's how we network. That's how we make the world better. Because, it's, because yeah, the, the author of some book somewhere got some great stuff, but, but that person at the school down the road might have something a little bit more beneficial for you. But we got to write. So, so here, you wrote this blog called How to Reject, how to, a blog post called How to Reject the Achievement Gap and Boost Our Belief in Every Student. And I want to read this passage that you wrote. Uh, bear with me, folks. It's a, it's a couple of short paragraphs. I'm going to read it quickly. You said, now the challenges our students face are real, but so is their ability to excel. And it's up to us to surround every student with an unshakable belief in their abilities, especially when they see it for themselves. But in order to do that, to, in order to do that work as leaders, we must study. So with the study part, you said for two years now, our team has held book studies outside of school hours to understand the achievement gap and why it exists so that we stop ourselves from accepting it as normal. I want to read that again. You said book studies outside of school hours to understand the achievement gap and why it exists so that we stop ourselves from accepting it as normal. 
Notice that I call these book studies and not book club. I think focusing on the study has really changed our team's attitude and challenged us to dig into this important work, period. So, so my question to you then, based on what that passage that you wrote in that blog, how have you been able to bring about buy-in from your staff on what I'm sure were very, some very uncomfortable conversations for some of the folks on staff with some of these discussions? Well, that was, that was the beauty of, well, one of the positives out of the pandemic. We don't have to stop once the school bell ends or when we're at school, we could actually continue the work if people volunteer volunteer to be able to want to do that in the evenings. So I'm a firm believer in the snowball effect where you start small and the snowball is at the top of the hill. It starts rolling down and it starts getting larger and larger and larger. So we just start with a small group of people that are interested. And from that, those people have friends that they're close to. Yeah. And those people have friends that they're close to. So just being strategic and starting small, and then the outcome is you can make a bigger impact based off of relationships with people and people having relationships with other people. So that's how we were able to make a positive impact in that capacity. Without without you going into the specificity, because I want to be sensitive to the fact that you're still in the building. But but were there were, were there ever times when the conversations did in fact get uncomfortable? All the time. Oh. Which, which which was the beauty of it, because once you start having uncomfortable conversations over time, then those uncomfortable conversations become a norm. But it takes time in order to build that trust. And I want to emphasize the word trust to the point where you feel comfortable having conversations that can be uncomfortable. So it's a, like I talked about the snowball. It's a slow, continuous progress over an extended period of time. But that is kind of in contrast to the way we operate sometimes in this world because we live in an instant gratification world where everything is like this. But when you're talking about learning about, you're talking about people's core values and their upbringing and how they view themselves and what their experiences are from birth, that is going to take some continuous learning over a extended period of time, so to speak. Yeah. Before I got, I got two more, but before I go to them, um, Principal Kitchen, someone asked, what's your blog? And, you know, I do that at the end, but I, I want to make sure in case someone has to leave, how, how can they, how can they get access to that blog page? Well, if they go to my Twitter handle, okitchen32, yeah. they'll be able to see the blog on, on my Twitter page. Right. But also it's a part of what's called the principal project. So if you go on Twitter and you type in principal project, you'll be able to find it that way as well. There you go. So there, once again, folks, you got to be on Twitter. Got to be on Twitter. Where it's at, man. Yep. That's where it's at. So you can go right to his page and just scroll down a few because it's, it's near the top yep. and you'll see it there or you can go to the other site, but it's it's there. Good, good stuff. Hey, hey uh, Principal Kitchen, you also facilitate an all pro dad meeting, right? Oh, yes. Oh, all, yes. All pro dad. What 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 is all pro dad? Oh, man. So... All Pro Dads is an opportunity for me to lead meetings with dads or guardians. And I even invite mothers or women. I don't want to discriminate who can come, but I need for families to be in the building so we can talk through not only celebrating their children, and we call that a pride moment where typically the father stands up talks about how proud he is of his daughter or his son in front of all the other fathers or people who are there and their children. And it, it is just a powerful experience. And we do this monthly in the mornings at 6.30 in the mornings and they're there. And it's an opportunity for me to also kind of talk through what it is to support us, to support you 
and to work together so we can all ensure that your child's successful. So I do sometimes talk about student data. I talk about how to have conversations with educators in the building. I talk about the importance of not waiting until a conference night or waiting until you hear from the educator to initiate conversations with the educator because this has to be a continuous process. So All Pro Dads is just an opportunity for us to really empower our families. And I lead that discussion in order for the students to be successful. And I don't want it to just stop at All Pro Dads. We also meet daily with families at seven o'clock in the morning, like clockwork, Monday through Friday, we're meeting with families. The student is there, the educator is there, I'm there and we're setting goals and we're listening to families because we can learn from families also what, what it is for us to all work together for their child to be very successful. And then in return, we set follow-up meetings, usually three weeks out to, to, to celebrate the success of that child. And we do that continuous every day. So we're not necessarily waiting on a family night or a conference night we're just doing things continuously to get feedback from the families and for them to feel welcome into the building. And All Pro Dads is an opportunity for that to happen, as well as those daily meetings in the morning with follow-up meetings each and every time. So you're up at 7, a, at 7 a.m. in the building meeting what? with families. I, I, I got some of that from you, Principal Kafela. You said that you were in the building early in the morning. So 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 we're in the building early in the morning. We're, we're walking yeah. around campus, 6.15, 6.30, connecting with our head custodian, who's phenomenal, connecting with him, walking, with, walking around, greeting the teachers as they come in each and every day, sitting down with families. All, all, all that sets the stage along with the morning message before – Kids even learn. All, all, all of that is prep work before the kids even go into the classroom and all that is necessary. But at the same time, you got to make sure that you are taking care of your body, eating properly and getting enough sleep in order to be able to do those things. But it's a joy to me. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. Earl, y- y'all hear that to the, to the aspiring folks or even to the veteran folks. Sometimes that work that's necessary, but 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 can't necessarily take place during the school day. You got to get it in in the morning, yes, sir. Late at night, so that you could be that instructional leader during the day. Good stuff, good stuff. I got one more for you. Um, the role of the AP and the principal, as you know, in the year with the years you've been in there now, can be quite overwhelming. Despite how organized we may be, despite how how much we plan, despite how we manage our time, the role can still be an overwhelming role. So overwhelming that some opt not to stay in it, that this is not for me. It's not what I thought it was going to be. Let me find something else to do with my life. My 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 ask of you, um, what advice do you have for someone that may be on this call or someone who may see the video? who fits that category that, yes, this is a bit overwhelming. What could you say to that person about keeping themselves motivated on their original why? There there are people that are depending on you. And God has given us all gifts to be a blessing to other people. So since God has given us all gifts and there are people depending on all of us, it's not, a, it's not about us. We, no, no, no one asked us to go into leadership. This is, this is a choice. These are words that you, you say on the Virtual AP Leadership Academy. This is something that we chose. This, there's a responsibility that comes along with that. And we are equipped with the gifts and the tools to be successful, but it starts here. We have to believe in ourselves and most importantly, there are people that are depending on us to do this job. Depending on us. And I, I want you know, let's let's stay there for a second before we go to the impact questions. Um, you said there are people dependent upon us to do this job. I, I would think I could be wrong, 
But I would think that there are people who lose sight of that because we get so caught up into us, which is understandable, but get so caught up into us and how overbearing, overwhelming this work is that I forget that there are young people that show up to this building because of us mm -hmm. or there are staff members who show up in this building because of us. Right. They, they, I, I got to give you this example. It's not, not necessarily a because of us, but a challenge. Yesterday, I, I went to get a checkup on my heart, right? And they, they got it so locked down that you can't even just walk into the doctor's office. You have to stand out. You have to call first that you're there. You stand outside. They come see you. They te check your temperature, and then they escort you into a seat that you're not sitting near anybody. So I'm standing next to a, a, a woman. She's got on a mask. I got on a mask. You have to wear a mask as well. And you know, I don't recognize her. And she probably didn't recognize me. So then I go in, have my examination, successful. And then I come out and that same woman is outside sitting in her car waiting for the person she came with. And she said, Mr. Kefele. And I looked at her. I said, do I know you? She said, yeah, you know me. She said, I was that one of the schools I led, which I only stayed for a year. And we talk, we're talking about 2001, 2002. She said, I was one of your math teachers. And I looked at her. I said, oh, my God. And I called her name. And she said, um, so we got to talking. Right. And it made me reflect back. That's probably what generated this question. Mm -hmm. It made me reflect back on the challenges of that school. Of me going to a district that I didn't know anything about and and, and, and just being new to a district, not to leadership, but a district and it, taking on a new challenge. And she said to me, she said, those kids really loved you. I didn't mm -hmm. say I went back home to East Orange. I went back home because I wanted to be back home where I'm from. She said, them kids really loved you. And I said, yeah, wow. I said, one of my biggest regrets in all of my career is leaving that district instead of staying there to, to, to grow that school to what it could have become. But my point is that statement she made, those students really loved you. I wasn't thinking about it on that level back in them days. I think I was about 42, 43 years old. I, I No, 41, 42. I wasn't thinking about it like that. I was thinking about me, not thinking, but there are children who were coming there who were probably dependent on my leadership. See, I'm hollering at somebody out there watching right now. You may not be thinking on that level either. There could be a child who whose hope is hitched to your wagon, right? A child out there who I feel whole because you're there. You, my assistant principal, you, my principal, you matter in ways that I just don't have the courage to tell you. See, I had to learn that over time. That's wisdom. But I appreciate the way you said that because it reminded me of that, that, that scenario from yesterday and, um, and, of, uh, and of the fact that there are young people who are looking at us. They're looking to us. And they may be the quietest one in the building. Right. It's like 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 they're not going to be the one running up to you, shaking your hand and hugging you. That might be the quiet one that you don't even recognize. Right. They sitting in the corner somewhere outside during the playground activity. They, they're not playing with folk. But that person is looking to you. Mm -hmm. I'm just reminding you based on what what Kitchen just said. Did you want to add something to that, by the way? Because I know I, I, I bombarded what you just said, but um. Uh, bogarted what you just said but any, anything you want to add to that no i mean you summed that up perfectly there there are students that you may not even know the impact that you're having in their lives that they are they are in awe and they are paying attention to your every move and they you you are setting the stage up for whatever vision that student has for their success in their life you are playing a significant role in that vision and that comes with a certain amount of accountability and, 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 and comes with a certain respect that we all must have because it's about being a blessing to other people. Yeah. And we have to always remember that. That's right. Being a being a blessing to other people. 
good way to close us out. Let me let's let's go right to our BAM impact rapid fire questions. One word answer, one sentence if need be. Let's 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 go through it like that. There, you all set? Let's do it. Is education on the right path for underserved children? No. Can true equity occur in America's schools for black, brown, and other underserved students? Yes. Does Otis Kitchen's work contribute to the progress we desperately need? Yes. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? The same. Why do you continue to do this work? My faith. What fires you up within the work that you do? Inequities. What do you love about the work you do? The student's success. What do you dislike about the work that you do? The politics. Yeah. <laughs> what has been your greatest victory in this work? My integrity has always been intact. Wow. What was your greatest mistake in this work? Nothing. What has been your greatest challenge in this work? The politics. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? Yes. Are you proud of your first year as a principal? Yes. Who inspires you in this work? My mother, Carter G. Woodson, Frederick Douglass, and Principal Kefele. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, what an honor to be included with that group of um, individuals. What are you reading right now? Blog, article, book, anything? Culturally Responsive Teaching in the Brain by Zaretta Hammond. Yeah. What book do you recommend for our viewers? Uh, Equity and Social Justice Education 50 by Principal Kefele. We Got This by Cornelius Minor yeah. and Dana Lee by Brene Brown. Yeah, I was just with Minor too. We were somewhere. I don't know where it was. We were somewhere. Oh, man, that's my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? Getting my doctorate. Are you satisfied with where you are professionally right now? Yes, I am. What could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? There are no coincidences in life. Everything is set up for God to provide us with the tools necessary to be successful. And you just continue to have faith and you continue to put in the work and everything will happen the way it's supposed to happen. And you will learn as a result of it. Love it. Um, what could you say to a viewer out there who's lost their fire? Continue to keep at it only because there are students that are depending on you. And finally, if Otis Kitchen was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Versatility. Versatility. That's a great word. Versatility. Um, hey, hey, Otis, man, this was uh, this was a tremendous conversation. I, I appreciate you immensely for it. Hey, folks, if you if you if you if you agree with me that this was a great conversation, if you found it beneficial, if you found it worth your while, hit them up with some emojis, man. Let me let me see some fire or let me see some hearts. Let me see some praise. Let me see with some bombs. Let me see whatever it is that you use to express yourself relative to um, emojis in your in your space, in your world. And let me pull the I've been pulling the black bat. Let me pull the traditional <laughs> in the day. I ain't pulled this one in a while. You hit, you know, you hit the grand slam. You, you, you gave, you gave them what the Mets need of you. Because <laughs> the, the Mets need a grand slam. And they, they, oh, they, man. I hope the New York Mets were watching this morning, right? <laughs> the, the manager, Buck Showalter. I hope, I hope you were watching to see how to hit the home run. Because that's what, that's what Principal Otis Kitchen just did. He hit the home run. So good job with the Louisville Slugger. Uh, keep on hitting them home runs for your students, for your staff, for your school, for your community out there. Because when you hit home runs, when you hit grand slams, everybody benefits. How can the folks out here stay in touch with you? Um, read your um, the blog post once again, and maybe you got a book that's going to come out at some point. How, how, how do they stay connected to you? Twitter at, at okitchen 32 and with the blogs, the principal project and another blog should be coming out very soon. And I'm actually blessed enough to do a voice, a voice over with this blog. So oh, wow. do it. 
I need I need that. <laughs> Every book I write, blog I wrote, write article I write, man, I wish I could. My, you know, ASCD doesn't do voiceover yet, but maybe, maybe as they move forward, they'll think they'll they'll reconsider that because I would love to do a voiceover. But even the blog, man, that's that's something I need to think about because that's doable, mm-hmm. right? So, so good stuff. I appreciate you. Uh, any final words? No, it's definitely been a blessing to be here. And Principal Kofaley, I appreciate you immensely. And I'll continue to be on as long as you're rocking. I'm rocking. We're on week 125. Hopefully we can go to 2, 300. And I'll continue to be there. Or I'll tune in on YouTube to get the recording. There you go. I appreciate you. Let me give the rundown. Stay here for me even when I go off. Uh, Next week. I got Plainfield, New Jersey, first-year principal Greg Sneed and Cincinnati, Ohio, first-year principal Michael Benton. So in other words, as I said earlier, for those who were not on earlier, I got to bring some of your peers on here, too, that have been doing this for shorter periods of time than some of the veterans who've been knocking this thing out for 20 and 30 years, written a million books and spoken on every stage in America. They're beneficial, and I'm going to continue to bring them on. In fact, I got a real heavyweight coming on in about a month. I'll leave the name until later. But um, but I want your peers to come on here, too. You know, folks who just been doing it for a week, (laughs) a month, you know, two weeks, whatever it is. So we're doing that, too. So that'll be two first year prints. I mean, they don't even know what two months feels like in this in, in this game yet. But yet I'm sure they got something that's going to be re- that's going to resonate with someone watching. So be tuned. Stay tuned. Tune in next week. 1055 for Michael Benton and Greg Sneed. My wife probably like Greg Sneed. <laughs> yeah, because because that's that's someone we know. So I didn't tell her in advance. So she's probably like, Greg Snee, is that the same guy we know? <laughs> hey, that's Greg from Jersey. Hey, y'all, next week, 10 o'clock, Facebook Live, Sean Hurt, uh, 10.30, Sheikah Houston, Tammy Taylor, Dr. Sheikah Houston, soon to be Dr. Tammy Taylor, Create and Educate. Um, fr- uh, I'm getting ready to say Thursday. Sunday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. These are all Eastern times. Josh Tovar, Dean Packard with Unlock the Middle. I'll be their guest, I think, on the 25th in a week. So be tuned for that. They got somebody on tomorrow, probably someone I know. I don't know who they got on, though, but I'll be on with them on the 25th. So be ready. Um, My two books on assistant principal leadership. You can get it right now, Amazon.com. Assistant Principal 50, Aspiring Principal 50. I told you I just finished writing Protecting Your AP Leadership Effectiveness, man. that would be out in the spring. We'll talk more about that. Visit virtual, uh, I mean, visit principalcafele.com. I got all them resources on there. So make sure that you visit the site. I got all them videos, all them blogs, all them articles, all them podcasts, man. I got so much stuff. In fact, I got so much stuff on there. I'm I'm behind. I'm a columnist for Learning Forward. And I haven't posted but one of my columns, right? One article. So uh, I'll get all that on there. But you can Google Prince, no, Baruti Cafele slash or dash Learning Forward. And see all them articles I've been writing all year, man. Um, I've been writing them all year. It's, that's just something else I do with that Mamba mentality, man. It's like you can't even think about all the stuff you do. You just do it. Um, subscribe to the Virtual AP Leadership Academy YouTube channel so that you don't miss anything. Hit that red button. Subscribe. Some of the YouTubers, they put the little red button on the screen. I, I don't go that far. I'm too old. <laughs> just hit the red button. And they put the little finger pressing it. I, 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 I ain't doing that. Just subscribe. <laughs> And then also like, <laughs> like and follow the virtual AP Leadership Academy uh, Facebook page, man. This is a two-day thing. It ain't just Saturday. It's the Sunday um, commentary I write. I think I'm on number 80, right? So I've been at 80. Can you imagine? That's, that's more than I don't even think about. 80 of these things I've written, man. And a lot of people don't realize it. So hit. So go to virtual AP Leadership Academy on Facebook. And um, subscribe, uh, no, like and follow. That's it. Like and follow. You got different platforms, use different words. Yes, sir. Did, did you mention the principal of failure rights? Because I know you used to put I know, blogs right? up there and you have magnificent information on there as well. I'll be forgetting, man. Come on, man. You got to tell about principal of <laughs> yeah. rights. Principal of failure rights blog page. Man, I got about what, like 60 or 70 different articles on there. So I got a lot of stuff going on, man. I'm Mamba. I'm, I'm, I should have worn my Kobe jersey today. <laughs> so 
<laughs> yeah, I got the Principal Kefele Rights. That's what an S. Principal Kefele Rights dot com. Right. I, all my all my blog page articles are there. Yeah, because that one has the what was it? The mis representation or misuse of the assistant principal. What yeah, was the yeah, that, yeah, that's got the assistant principal ship, the most most underutilized. Yes. Yeah. That's why right, one of the most powerful ones that I know I personally read. That's the one that got the most traffic of all the ones I've written. Yeah. The most the most misunderstood and underutilized position yes. in all of education. So go visit that and check out all of them, which includes my book list. I got a book list on there, recommended reading. Right. So you go there. And then lastly, as I always say, your diet, your exercise, your COVID precautions, your monkeypox precautions. Let me add this new one just for humor. Some of y'all ain't going to get this because it's, it's not in your, your neck of the woods. But where I am, we got these little ugly bugs around here called spotted lantern flies. Mm -hmm. they got, they, 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 they're about the size of a cicada. And, and, they, and, and they got these spotted wings. They're gray with these black spots. And when they open their wings, it's all red. Oh, and no. They're, and they're flying all over the place they land on you they'll hit you in your face you'll be sitting somewhere outside and they'll they'll land on your head your shoulder your legs and they're about this big they ain't we ain't talking about no fly right they're about this big they came they, they, they came here on a on a ship from china right a ship from china as eggs and those eggs hatched when they got here and they, they landed in, in, in somewhere near Pennsylvania and they, and it just took off. And now they're up and down the east, the northeast primarily. But they, they, oh, my goodness, it's terrible. So 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 now they, they tell you on the news or they're on the news every day. They say step on them because they kill plants and trees. Right. So they say step on them. The problem is last summer they used to be on the ground. You could just walk up on it and step on it. But over the year, they figured out we have wings, we can fly. So now when you attempt to step on it, they fly. <laughs> so that, but they don't fly far. So that so that they'll fly or they'll fly and then they come back at you. Right? <laughs> they come back at you. So so that's so y'all in the you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You're lucky. Hopefully they won't get they don't sting them. They don't bite, they don't sting, but they will tear up the trees and, and the plants. My neighbor got a tree that is completely dead. There's not a leaf that grows on it, and she probably got a nest of these things inside, right? Because there's a big hole in the tree. So I might have to call the city to inspect that, right? Because I live, I'm, I, I sit outside in those things. I can't, I can't even enjoy my backyard. Enough said, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm venting on live stream, right? <laughs> so well, y'all hung on there. Listen, oh, I appreciate you. Going in. <laughs> hey, y'all. I appreciate you being here. Have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist down back one two three bam i see y'all next saturday man we got another big one planned have a great week everybody